However, uh, in order for people to make a calm and rational assessment uh, and choices about uh, the kinds of risks uh, that, are facing, that they are facing by living in this area, I thought it was important to at least present people with this data. Uh, I would also like to bring to your attention uh, other data that might be used uh, to uh, compare uh, these, um, the, the data that I've just given you. For example, uh, if you are a smoker, uh, your, uh, the, excuse me, the, um, that would be, a, if you are a heavy smoker, that would be equivalent to uh, your receiving radiation exposure from 1,000 to th to 2,000 millisieverts. If you are obese, uh, that means that you are um, equivalent your risk goes up to the equivalent of being exposed to 200 to 250 millisieverts. If you um, hate your vegetables and, and don't eat a balanced diet, uh, that would uh, increase your um, cancer risk uh, equivalent to 100 to 200 millisieverts of exposure. Um, in regard to, uh, just to give you um, some more um, um, uh, information for you to consider, uh, if uh, you consider that uh, drinking water, tap water, contains chloroform, uh, if you were to uh, drink this two liters of this water every day, then uh, the, your uh, increased cancer risks would only be uh, less than 0.01%. Uh, that would be less than the 100 to 200 uh, millimeter exp millisievert exposure I mentioned earlier. With regard to uh, the standards that we've set for um, allowable exposure to radiation, which is 20 millisieverts per year, uh, doing uh, surveys of people who would be around that area, the actual exposure that they would be receiving uh, would be about one-fourth of this uh, standard. In other words, their exposure would be about four to five millis millisieverts per year. In other words, you've taken a very conservative estimate. The source. There are many, many uh, diverse uh, elements to consider uh, going forward. However, uh, we believe that we have a responsibility to the people of Fukushima, to people who uh, live their everyday lives in Fukushima, uh, to know uh, this information. In other words, therefore, we are, although it is a very low risk, we are presenting uh, the people with uh, this information. We also believe that it is important uh, to keep on our, to keep working, to keep striving to bring down these radiation levels as much as possible. Uh, this is especially to uh, when uh, the uh, people in question are children. Uh, we believe that um, no efforts should be spared to, to try to um, limit the exposure of uh, children to radioactivity. As a result, in regard to opening, reopening schools, we believe that they should not be reopened until we can bring the radiation levels down to less than one microsievert. That every effort should be made to protect uh, children from uh, possible uh, contamination from the from the uh, foods that they put in their mouths. And we believe that this must be a community-wide effort, uh, not just a personal or individual effort. In other words, uh, the radiation levels of uh, foods uh, must be done on a community level. What I mean by that is that we must uh, distribute en enough uh, radiation meters or dosimeters so that everything uh, can be measured. As I mentioned earlier, I believe very, very strongly uh, that uh, Fukushima should serve as the center for future research and development of technologies uh, regarding uh, medical treatment using low levels of radioactivity. Uh, I believe that uh, it is not simply enough to uh, do research. You must set very, very ambitious or high targets. Uh, one of the targets that I am considering uh, putting into place right now is to bring uh, the uh, cancer levels, uh, the, in, a, in other words, uh, the percentage of people who uh, contract cancer during their lifetimes, uh, to uh, very, very low levels. More specifically, what I'm saying is that I would like to make uh, Fukushima Prefecture the prefecture where it is eventually um, least likely that a person will contract cancer. Uh, this is not simply a, a, an abstract dream. I've spoken about this with experts, and they have said that it is possible. At present, uh, we do not have inf enough information uh, to uh, s specifically set targets uh, at present. Uh, however, uh, we would like to, uh, I would like to give you some idea of what I have in mind. On the one hand, certainly, if you are uh, exposed to radioactive materials, it is true that uh, even though it might be a small percentage, uh, the increased uh, risk that you uh, will encounter of contracting cancer uh, is something that you cannot avoid. In other words, you, you will... Uh, you will have this increased uh, possibility that you might contract cancer. However, when we look at cancer from a, a larger picture, we see that there are other risks, uh, even bigger risks, uh, that might cause a person uh, to contract cancer. As I mentioned earlier, uh, there are things that we can do. For example, perhaps we can, uh, in Fukushima Prefecture, discourage people from smoking. 
perhaps we can provide more balanced meals or encourage people to eat it in a healthier, more nutritious way. Or perhaps we can have a Fukushima uh, uh, policy so that people get much more exercise and more physically active. And as a result of all of these measures, the, um, the uh, number of people who are ill, become ill or develop cancer actually goes down. In other words, I think there is a real possibility that Fukushima could become a prefecture of long-lived, healthy uh, people. Um, I believe that uh, Fukushima could actually take the leadership uh, in this uh, area in Japan, and I believe that the Japanese government could very much support uh, these initiatives. Uh, I said earlier that uh, for the facilities itself, the on-site facilities themselves, we have come to a state of closure or resolution. However, uh, we cannot say that uh, things have been resolved until the off-site areas, in other words, the rest of uh, Fukushima also becomes vital again and full of energy again. That is the only way that we can have true resolution to this um, accident. And I would like simply to say here that we are moving forward. We have taken a big step forward in this process. Noda has declared that until uh, Fukushima recovers, we cannot have true recovery uh, for the rest of Japan. As uh, the youngest member of the cabinet, uh, I would like to uh, confirm with you here today that I intend to spend uh, the rest of my days following what happens in Fukushima, in other words, to share uh, their fate as well. Thank you for your kind attention. I think I forgot to introduce Mr. Aizawa uh, to you. He's sitting next to me. Is the vice president of TEPCO, must be due to the emotion caused by the death of uh, Kim Jong-il. We hope to, to get at the press club soon the president of uh, TEPCO. And, uh, and thank you very much, Mr. Christophe. And then the lady. And then we... Süddeutsche Zeitung, the difference between you and the Prime Minister, you now said that the equivalent of a cold shutdown while the Prime Minister spoke of a cold shutdown. Now in nuclear technology, a cold shutdown is the moment when you can open a reactor and uh, take the fuel out. And uh, in Fukushima, you are 10 to 25 years away from that, depending on each block. So my question is, is it not misleading to call it the equivalent or, uh, of a cold shutdown? And even much more misleading to call it a cold shutdown. Thank you. Excuse me, may the interpreter um, interject? Uh, she was told uh, that uh, the term that is used by the Prime Minister, which is Reon Tesi Jotai, should be translated as the equivalent of a uh, cold shutdown. down. So it is, they're using the same terminology. I was told just before we entered the room that that's the term I should use. Yeah. I'd like to confirm that um, both uh, members of the government, uh, also members of TEPCO and members of NISA, all use the same terminology, which is uh, translated as the situation or conditions or the equivalent of a cold shutdown. We all use the same terminology. And yes, of course, we understand uh, that there is a difference between uh, the cold shutdown uh, state that you have for a normal uh, nuclear power reactor and uh, the uh, state of cold shutdown that we have achieved at the Fukushima uh, nuclear power plant. And we are explaining the difference in concepts. So the concepts uh, are different. Uh, I would like to uh, point out to you that uh, the uh, direction that we are facing, in other words, the target that we are trying to achieve, is the same in both situations. In other words, uh, the goal is to ensure that we can have a situation for the uh, fuel, uh, nuclear fuel, where it is kept in a cooled state. We can continuously keep it cool. And secondly, uh, we want to um, be able to assure that uh, radioactive materials are not emitted. And um, that is the whole point of the cooling system that we have in place. So yes, the concepts are different, but the goals are the same. The direction is the same. Uh, and after Jim Bosan, Madame Limisi, when you po uh, pose your question, tell uh, which person you want to, to answer. Thank you. Yes, my question is directed to Mr. Hossono. My name is Judith Stalpers, Netherlands Press Association. Um, I would like to ask you, uh, you also mentioned in your NH NHK um, um, uh, information you gave on uh, uh, December 16 that there are scenarios you, um, you have you have in mind on which you can react appropriately so that the radioactivity won't uh, uh, get off the site. And that's also what is on the English language paper you just presented. 
um, which scenarios do you have in mind? So which problems could occur and what do you have in mind to counter these scenarios? Because that is what worries the people, whether you call it a cult of shutdown or not. Problem, uh, yeah. okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay. The problem that we have uh, in mind is the possibility that we will not be able to continue with the cooling system. In other words, the cooling water circulation system might uh, not work. And in regard to the measures that are being taken to deal with this situation, I think Mr. Aizawa will probably go into more detail after I, ha after I leave. But I would like to point out to you that it is for this reason to be able to uh, ensure that we have a, a stable uh, supply of water circulating to keep this cooling system uh, working. It's what the people have been working at the site for these past few months. To ensure that the cooling system works, uh, there basically is no possibility of another major accident occurring. The Another area that we are very much focusing on is the possibility of contaminated water leaking. Uh, of course, uh, even if contaminated water were to leak, this would not necessarily lead to a major accident. However, we feel that we must ensure that contaminated water leakage is stopped. Uh, this is something that must be, must be done. Teddy Jimbo with Video News. Personal sound, um, this is so unlike you. Um, you are the most sensible minister in the cabinet along all these, uh, you know, press conferences and everything um, during the uh, accident. But this time, I don't think you're making sense. Mm. You have said mm. you don't know where the nuclear fuel yes, is. Yes. You have said meltdown, melt through might have occurred. It is likely that the fuel is not, no longer inside the pressure chamber. Right. And you, don't say, you also said you don't know where the fuel is. But you say fuel is cooled down and yes. stable. How can you be sure? that something okay. is cooled down safely when you don't you not know where it is. Mm. And what's the rush? Why do you have to say the call shut down now? You have to declare it now. No one's going to believe it if you say it now, you know, on this condition. Why do you have to, you, what's the rush that you have to say it now when you don't know where the fuel is? You have to acknowledge that. Okay. And uh, uh, the investigation into the accident is not released yet. You don't know what caused the accident yet. And why, why, why hurry? Okay. The uh, harshest question from my friend, Mr. Jimbo. <laughs> In regard to where the uh, nuclear fuel might be, uh, there are three possibilities. Uh, one is that uh, the nuclear fuel is still in the pressure uh, vessel. Uh, the uh, next possibility is that it might have gone through, melted through the uh, pressure vessel and come into the containment vessel. And the third possibility is that it might have worked its way uh, out through the containment vessel and be underneath it. Yeah. In regard uh, to the temperature at the bottom of the pressure vessel and in regard to the temperature within the containment vessel, as has been uh, shown to you uh, through the documents that have been presented to you, the temperatures in these two areas are all under 100 degrees. Yeah, so in regard to that third possibility uh, that some uh, fuel uh, might have worked its way uh, out through the uh, containment vessel and gone underneath it, um, I think there's a very strong possibility, or we think there's a strong possibility that some fuel is actually in that location as well. But when you consider the fact that uh, because of gravity, things always f uh, fall from the top to the bottom, uh, you understand also that water is also being injected into this uh, system, and water also falls from top to bottom. Uh, in other words, uh, if there is nuclear fuel at the bottom of this uh, scenario, there, the, it is also being um, cooled by the water that is falling on top of it. The water that is falling on top of it is then... Um, taken out of the system, and, and it's actually uh, the water that is eventually going to be decontaminated and used as part of the circulating water cooling system. Uh, in regard to the state of this uh, cooling water uh, that is in the circulating system, its, st its situation is stable. To the uh, condition of this water, uh, there are different um, measures that we have taken to try to gauge its state. Uh, for example, is there any steam that is being emitted? Uh, are there fluctuations in the temperature of the water uh, that is extracted? Using all of this surrounding uh, information, uh, we have seen over the past few months that there have been no uh, such uh, changes in temperature or steam uh, being emitted. And therefore, uh, it is our conclusion that uh, it is in a stable state.